Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 52. This week I'm going to be talking a little bit about the valve sensor. Now I've done a few videos about this so I'm not going to be going over how you use it again. What I will talk about is one minor improvement I've made to the valve sensor which is the use of these 9 volt batteries here. So previously I had had uh, 8 AA battery pack that plugged into the uh, valve sensor like this and I've switched that to two 9 volt batteries because uh, this will give a higher voltage and we've actually found that having that higher voltage helps improve the uh, drops being released by the valve. Now if anybody has the old valve sensor and they want to make this change uh, it's pretty easy to do you just need to uh, basically use a, a standard 2.1 millimeter jack and uh, wire up two 9 volt batteries to it and you should be good to go. Uh, I'll also point out that if you're using alkaline batteries or the, uh, with the AA battery pack then um, they have a higher voltage than rechargeable and you'll get most of the benefit uh, just by using those but uh, a lot of people wanted to use rechargeable batteries and it wasn't working very well for them so we switched to these 9 volt batteries um, and two of them will work better than any setup with the AA batteries. Uh, you can also use um, an external power supply if you want to plug it into the wall. Again, it's just a 2.1 millimeter jack, so there's lots of power jacks you can buy on eBay and things that will uh, power this. You just want to look for something in the uh, 12 to 18 volt range that has an amp or more of current, and you should be good. So another thing I wanted to discuss is that uh, Mitch, one of the uh, people who's been working with me on improving the camera axe, has uh, found that uh, sometimes the valve sensor has spurious micro drops. And most people won't notice these, but if you're trying to create animation sequences of droplets, sometimes there's these extra little spurious drops that you have to Photoshop out. And uh, he, he looked into why that was happening and actually figured out that uh, it's basically there's, there's some uh, volume of water that's uh, building up after the, the valve uh, is occurring and basically this extra water there can sometimes get released and uh, he proved that by um, I'll show you you can open this guy up like that and um, he proved this by actually manufacturing um, a part with his mill that would fit inside there and basically uh, fill up all of the extra volume so that all of the water that came past the valve would exit as a single drop and uh, this seemed to solve the spurious drops. Now the problem is that uh, there's no easy way to manufacture that part um, in the lower volumes that we need so if anybody has a, a good idea on how you could basically sort of fill up the volume inside there um, and maybe do some experiments and stuff. I'd be very interested in, in finding something. I don't think it's a problem we need to solve. I've never seen any other people actually try to solve this for droplet photography. But I do think that if we did come up with a solution for that particular problem and could fill in that extra volume um, past the solenoid, that uh, it would make the uh, valve sensor even a little bit better. And it's, you know, something that's, you know, as far as I know, never been really investigated or, or done before. So that would be pretty cool. If anybody has ideas, please let me know. So the last thing I wanted to go over in this sort of mishmash of different things on the valve sensor are some common problems people have hit with the valve sensor. I sort of wanted to point those out so people can, uh, you know, watch this video and troubleshoot those issues themselves and uh, fix them without having to contact me via email or, or using the forums. So the first one I wanted to point out is uh, this uh, nut here during shipping. Sometimes it'll get a little bit loose and uh, if that's loose then the, the valve doesn't make drops properly. So um, you can just take a pliers and make sure that that's you know, kind of snug. It doesn't have to be real tight or anything, just make sure it's not loose. The other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, there's this foam underneath the circuit board and if if you get that wet in any way it's not going to damage anything but the valve won't work 
properly until that dries out. So a lot of times if you get it wet, the best thing is to just sort of peel that circuit board off and make sure th everything dries out. And then once it's dry, it'll work again. Um, if anybody has any really clever ideas on how to sort of shield that in a way that um, looks pretty nice, let me know. I mean, a lot of people have kind of put plastic bags over this with rubber bands and, and that works great. Maybe I should uh, add that to the uh, feature, but it doesn't look very elegant. So if anybody has a, a clever idea on, on how to improve uh, this and make it more water resistant, uh, let me know. And the uh, last thing I was going to go over is that sometimes um, things will get sort of gummed up inside the valve. And what you want to do then is you just want to fill up the reservoir with pretty hot water and uh, use the purge button to just sort of flow lots of volume of, of hot water through the uh, system. And that'll usually clear out the uh, gummed up valve system. If uh, that doesn't work, you can take apart the valve and stuff, but at that point, it might be best to just contact me if you're not not very handy person um, or, or want some more assistance on exactly what needs to be done. But uh, generally, you know, none of these happen very often. Uh, for the most part, uh, people don't see problems with a valve sensor. I just sort of wanted to point those out as, you know, probably the three most common issues that have come up. And thanks for watching.